Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer and I thank you for joining me. Today I have three different options for including gift cards in your handmade cards. So these are options that make it a little more special how the gift card is included, but no special products are needed to do these cards. I will also be showing some unique ways to create sentiment strips and incorporate them into the design of your card. Let's start by looking at the three different gift card holders that we'll create. So this one here, when you open it, the gift card pops up so it can be easily removed. The other option is to have a card that when you open it, the gift card slides up to be revealed. And then third option, which we're actually going to create first, just has a gift card simply tucked in the front so that it can easily be removed by the recipient. Today's video also features the new Stamping Village Thinking of You stamp set. Several stamp companies came together to design this, each contributing a design, and these include different encouragement and appreciation sentiments that you can use to make cards for others during this challenging time. The nice thing about this stamp set is there's a lot of different styles and designs, and $5 from each set goes to the Save the Children Foundation. So I'll focus on using that for today's cards. This video is part of a video hop, and each of the stops on the hop feature the same stamp set and are the different companies included in the set. So be sure to check out my description below to see those other videos for more ideas using the same stamp set. Okay, let's get started creating. I'm gonna start with this one where the gift card is on the front of the card and part of the design. We're gonna start by making those sentiment strips that you see along the background. For this, I have some Lawn Fawn and Hero Arts card stocks, beautiful colors here, and I'm going to stamp sentiments repeatedly on these and cut them into strips. I have a piece of card stock and my Hero Arts Misty stamping tool. I'm putting a piece of tape right along where the edge of this card stock is in my Misty. So I'll put the tape right along the edge here. This is just a marker so I know where to put my stamp. Now I have a thin sentiment stamp that is less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to center it along one of those grid lines in the background, one row of grid, and that's why I put the tape above and below that, so that I have one row of the grid marked off. I don't usually do that, but in the video I think it makes it easier to see. So I've centered my sentiment in there, so it fits perfectly, and then I'll close the door on my Misty, and I can take that tape away. I'm just going to reuse that tape over and over. Again, you don't need to do that. Now I'm putting my cardstock back in and we can make our first impression. The reason I centered that sentiment strip on one of those grid marks is now I can stamp them all evenly and cut them evenly. So watch, I'll go ahead and stamp this. I'm going to double stamp it to make it darker. Then I'm going to move my paper over one grid line. See how I did one grid line? And I'm going to leave it there and stamp again. And I'll keep moving over one grid line and stamping. And what happens is all of my sentiments are evenly spaced. And then I can cut them evenly and very quickly. I wanted to have a lot of stamp sentiment strips to make several cards. And by doing this, it saves me a lot of time. I do this often and I save extra sentiment strips for future cards in a little bowl next to my desk so that I can grab whenever I'm doing a quick card. Okay, so you can see each time I move over one grid line and I stamp. Now once I'm done, I could keep going and going here, but I'm just going to rotate my paper around and do some on the other side so that I have room to still have my paper in the misty, and that way I can make a lot of strips at once. Now I'm looking to make a sentiment on a strip where there's a lot of strip left over plain to the left and the right of my sentiment because that's what I wanted to do with my card design. You could use a not so tall piece of paper for this so you can make small sentiment strips, which you'll see me do later in this video. It's really up to you. You could even do multiple sentiments along that line for repeated sentiments if you wanted. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to use my Tim Holtz trimmer to cut this. You could use any trimmer. The grid marks on the background of this trimmer are also a quarter of an inch, just like on our stamping tool. So what I'll do is I'll move the left edge of my cardstock one grid line and cut. Then I'll move it one more grid line and cut. And what happens is it cuts our sentiment strips perfectly at a quarter of an inch. And our sentiments are centered on it because we use that trick on the Misty. And now we're doing the same on our, on our uh, trimmer, just a quarter of an inch each time. 
Now, the, one of the other options for creating strips like this is to cut all the strips and then stamp on each one. But that can be cumbersome to do. And you can see how fast I'm able to create a bunch of these at once. Now notice here I'm getting to the end of my cardstock. I have a small piece to hold on to. I wanted to show you a trick to make this easier. If you have a trimmer like this, this is really helpful. I take a scrap piece of cardstock and I bo butt both of the pieces up against the bottom edge of my trimmer there. And I tape them together. Now that white scrap piece is just a handle. And I'm going to keep moving my blue piece a quarter of an inch each time, one grid line, to continue cutting up each of those strips. So the white piece is just there as a little handle so I can continue cutting that narrow blue piece. Once I'm done, you can see I have lots of strips ready to go. Now I wanted some other sentiments and my other sentiments were taller. This one's taller than a quarter of an inch. So instead of centering it between in one grid line, I'm going to center it between two. So that's a half inch sentiment strip. So I'm going to center it right in that area right there in between those two grid lines. And then we can start doing our stamping. In this case, each time I'm going to move two grid lines because this is a taller sentiment. So there we stamped it. I'm going to move this over two grid lines. So watch, just scoot it over one, two, and then I'll stamp it again. And I'll keep doing this to cover that entire piece. Okay, so once I've done this side, I can go ahead and rotate my cardstock to do the other side. So this it will result in less sentiment strips because they're going to be taller, but I could do another sheet if I wanted to. Okay, so now it's time to trim these down. I again have my Tim Holtz trimmer. This time I will move over two grid lines to do that half inch cut. So there I moved over two grid lines. We have the perfect sentiment strip. I'll move two more grid lines and continue to cut. Once my paper got too narrow to hold, I added the little scrap so I would have a handle, and then I could continue to cut the last three strips. I did make more strips with the stamp sentiments, and I wanted to show you that you can do this with any size sentiment. So this one's taller, so I move three grid lines each time to do this. So that's three quarters of an inch. And then when I go to cut them, I just move three grid lines then too. So you can customize this for whatever sentiment you have. So all of these strips will form my background, but I wanted to have just a pop of more color. So I grabbed some green cardstock and I cut really thin strips from it. And I kind of varied the width of these. And I thought it'd be fun to just mix these plain bright strips up with our stamp sentiments. So I have a top folding white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I decided to glue these down at an angle. I like the look of them being angled in the background and it's actually easier. You don't have to be um, certain to keep it going straight by doing this. You can just put them at an angle and it's much easier. Now each time I kind of uh, moved where the sentiment is on it. I didn't want it all straight down the center. I wanted some of the sentiments to be to the left, some to be to the right, some to be in the center. I could have just kept repeating the sentiments along the whole strip, but I thought this would be a nice change. So you can see how they're all positioned differently. Once I covered the front of the card, I flipped it over and cut off the, all the excess. And you can save those little scraps for another card if you want to. I still have many sentiment strips left over for my next cards. Okay, now it's time to create the feature that holds the gift card on the front of the card. This is the easiest one to do. Now these cards, I forgot to mention, are going to three nurses that I have found that work on COVID floors. So I wanted to give them something extra special. So for this one, it holds a Starbucks gift card. Now for this, all you need to have is a piece of scrap cardstock. It doesn't matter what it looks like because it will be hidden. And this is five and a quarter inches by about uh, three quarters of an inch. Really doesn't matter the size. Now I'm holding my gift card and I'm going to wrap it around the gift card very tight. You want that to be snug on there. That way the gift card won't fall out. Now I'm going to use some tape to just tape this shut. So we just have this little sleeve that can slide right over our gift card. I'm using Lawn Fawn double sided tape because it's super strong. Off screen, I white heat embossed some images from the Village stamp set onto a piece of dark teal cardstock. And I want to put that right over that scrap that we wrapped around the gift card to hide it. So I'm putting some strong double-sided tape on there. And then I will glue that to the back of that sentiment that we white heat embossed. Excuse the uh, messed up stamping on the back side. I'm going to try to center it right there on the back. 
Then I'm going to put some foam tape on those two ends that are hanging off. Now that teal piece, it doesn't matter what size it is, you just want it to be wider than your gift card. So you have a place for this foam tape. Okay, so once I have that on there, I can put some glue on the back of that. I find the more glue the better because we don't want this to come off when they slide the gift card out. So I put some strong liquid adhesive on there and now we can add it right to the front of our card. Now at this point, I wanted the, um, this to pop a little bit more. So I totally changed my plans. I do this often. I'm removing this very carefully here and then I'm going to add a white mat behind this piece. So I'm just kind of carefully pulling this off, adding a white mat, and then gluing it back on. I felt like that white kind of added a pop around that. I also wanted that white around our background. So I actually cut off that note card and I changed it from a note card to a panel that was four by five and a quarter and added it onto a new white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I then added a few Lucy's card silver gems scattered on the background just for a bit of sparkle. And there you can see how the gift card slides in and out, but stays in there and doesn't fall out on its own. So this is a great basic design that you could do with any stamps you have for any theme and any occasion and include that little gift card. Okay, my next version has a gift card surprise when you open it up. A little gift card pops up and you could also decorate this however you want with any stamps you want. I decided to use all those sentiment strips we have left over. Now for the inside you need some cardstock and I like to use lightweight cardstock if I have it. You don't have to do this. You could use heavyweight if you wanted, but I have this Concord and Ninth lightweight paper pack. I like these because they're beautiful colors, but not as heavyweight, so it's great for interactive elements. I'm going to cut two pieces that are four and a quarter by three and a half. These two will go together to create the pop-up feature on the inside. Now I'm going to do score lines on both of these pieces at a half inch, which I'm doing here. Then I'm going to move it over and do a score line an inch from that last score line. Then move it over and score it a half inch from the last score line. And then move it over and score it at one inch. So we have alternating between half inch and one inch. This is going to form half of our pop-up feature. Now I'm going to use my bone folder to reinforce those folds. And what we'll end up with is a folded rectangle, like a long, narrow rectangle that will be a pop-up in our card. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other piece. So I have two pieces exactly the same. And you can see how they kind of fold up to make a rectangle. Now I'm putting a strong liquid adhesive on one of the small end flaps. And I'll adhere it to the other end flap. This makes that rectangle. You could use strong double-sided tape or a strong liquid adhesive here. I wouldn't use a tape runner because this all needs to stay super well despite kind of being pulled on when you open it and open and close the card. Okay, so there we have our two rectangles. Now I have my note card that I created. I'll show you the front in a moment. I'm taking one of those rectangles and putting adhesive along one of the large sides and one of the small sides. I'm going to glue this right into the crease of our note card so that the tall side is glued to the inside back of our card. So you can see there how it's glued in there. I'm gonna hold it there a bit so that that glues nice and tight to the inside of the card. So you can see how we have that rectangle there. Now I'm going to take the other one and glue that in. So I'm putting some adhesive in the front of, in right in front of the rectangle we already glued down. Then just some on the side here of the front of that. So see, I'm just putting on the sides. We want room for a gift card in between there. Okay, so I'll take that one and I'm going to place it right into that adhesive and I'm gonna hold it there. I'm gonna squeeze it and hold it there so that it dries. You can take your gift card if you want and slide it in there just to make sure there's room for it. It goes in and out nicely. The gift card is not glued in there. It's just held in there by those two rectangles. Okay, now I'm going to take some of my leftover strips and glue them on the inside so it's decorated too. On the front of my card, I just created a panel with some of the leftover strips and glued that to the front. So when I took the time to make all of those stamp strips earlier, I made enough for multiple cards. So you can see how quickly the second one came together. Okay, so you can see how there's lots of greetings in there too. For the front of the card, I used the Altenew All the Hearts die set. 
This has the large solid heart and then a die that cuts a bunch of different size small hearts. I stamped Thinking of You from the Village stamp set onto the heart, added that to my card. Then I die cut a bunch of hearts or little hearts from silver mirror cardstock that I had a scrap of and I glued those scattered around the front too. I thought the hearts would make it a little more special. Okay, now when we open this up, check it out. We have a pop-up gift card. This particular card is going to a grocery store manager that I know who's seven and a half months pregnant and has been working super hard, so I thought she'd like a gift card to one of our local pizza places that we like so much. So I thought adding the pop-up feature made it a little more special. Okay, my third gift card holder design is really easy to make and something that you can do without gift cards too. When you open it, it slides up. You could have a little crit critter slide up as a surprise, whatever you want, but it's perfect for a gift card. Okay, so I'm starting with a note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half and top folding. To make this, this is what I do for all of my cards. It's four and a quarter by 11 and I just fold it right in half. I also need a piece that is five and a quarter by three and a half. This can be any color cardstock, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to score at a half inch from each end. So half inch from one side and a half inch from the other. Now I'm going to fold right along that and reinforce it with my bone folder. So we have what looks kind of like a little table. Now on those little flaps, I like to cut a little bit off at an angle. You don't have to do this, but I find that it really gives a nice finished look. You don't see the creases when you fold up the card. So I, I usually end up just trimming a little bit off. Okay, now we're going to put some strong adhesive on those little flaps. I decided to use a strong double-sided tape here instead of liquid adhesive so that I can easily assemble this, but it's up to you. This is Lawn Fawn double-sided tape, which is definitely a favorite of mine. Super strong and I don't have to worry about it coming undone. I'm also going to put a piece of the double-sided tape on the bottom edge of the inside of our note card. So right along the bottom edge. Remove that release paper, remove the release papers from our flap, and now I'm going to fold the flaps in and put this right onto the bottom of our card. So the bottom will be sealed because we put that tape along the inside bottom edge and the sides of this will be sealed to create a pocket. So I just glue that right to the inside of the card, right along the bottom. Very simple pocket. There's many ways to do pockets. I think that's pretty much the easiest way of all. Okay, so now you can see how there's a pocket. It's kind of hard to see there, but I'll tuck my fingers in there so you can see that there is a little pocket right there. Now I have a piece of colored cardstock that is five inches by four inches, and I'm going to score about three quarters of an inch from one end. You could do a half inch or three quarters an inch, up to you. I'm putting some double-sided tape right along that flap. Then I'm going to, again, cut a little angle at each end just because I feel like it gives it uh, a better finished look. Okay, so I can remove the release paper and I'm going to take this so that the sticky is facing up towards the camera. I'm flattening out the flap, the sticky is facing up. I'm going to tuck the other end into the pocket. You'll see how easy this is. Line up the top of that blue piece with the crease of our note card. So it's lined up there. And then I will just close the card onto that exposed adhesive. So watch, I'm just going to take the card and close it, press it into that adhesive, really press down nicely. You wanna make sure it adheres. And then when I open it, that piece will slide in and out of the pocket. Now it won't come out of the pocket, we don't want that. We just want it to slide in and out a bit. Now I have a gift card here and I'm putting a few little glue dots on the back. You could use washi tape if you wanted. And I'm going to tuck that in there so it's on that blue piece so that when you open the card, the gift card slides up a bit, which makes it more obvious that it's there. Now to decorate this card, I decided to incorporate some other sentiments and I'm using two new Concord and Ninth sets. On the left is the Wildflower Fields. It has these really simple, fun layering wildflowers that you can use in many ways. But I really like the two sentiments that say, say uh, keep being amazing and grateful for all you do. I'm also using the Simply Said stamp set that's on the right there. That also has lots of encouraging sentiments and I thought they would be great to incorporate on these cards. This time I'm going to do two sentiments in one line. I wanted to show you that this is an option too because I'm going to cut these into small little sentiment strips. 
So once again, I have some narrow uh, sentiments here. So I centered them in one grid line and now I'm stamping, moving one grid line, stamping and continuing to do that. And look how many sentiment strips I'm going to get from this one piece. This time I'm cutting this down into little columns of the sentiments. I'm going to actually hold them together to do the cutting to save time. Each time I move over one grid line and I cut. And look how fast I have all of those sentiments. If you like to mass produce cards, this is the way to go. Okay, now I have a white cardstock piece that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm putting a pencil line down the center just so I knew where to start and kind of keep my sentiments straight. You can see I use that method I just showed you for making all the sentiment strips for a bunch of others. You can see them all up there on the top right. All of these are from the Concord and Ninth stamp sets that I just showed you. I just glued them onto the panel using kind of a patchwork look with some white showing in between each. I also cut lots of thin strips of green cardstock to add a pop of color. Once I completed the entire panel, I'm using some glue and adding it onto the front of the white note card that we made it, that we made with the gift card inside. I then have a You're My Hero sentiment that I white heat embossed, and that's from the Village stamp set, and I added that to the front. You can see I also put some of the leftover sentiments on the inside too. Now there is a thank sentiment that I glued right above the gift card. That's from an older Concord and Ninth die set that I believe is discontinued, but you could stamp something there if you wanted to. I think this third version of a gift card holder is my favorite. The one I'll make more of. This one's going to another nurse. So I hope this video inspires you to incorporate gift cards in very creative ways and also gives you some ideas for using your sentiments as the focus of your card. So I didn't use any images but sentiments, but I was able to create a few different designs. If you're interested in the products that I talk about or joining that video hop, that information is in my description below. And I also link to a couple other videos that share using sentiments creatively. Thanks for watching. I hope you return again soon and stay safe.